The film opens in 1981, showcasing a man named Forrest Gump seated on a bench near a bus stop in Savannah, Georgia. Despite his ungroomed appearance and scruffy shoes, Forrest is a simple yet endearing character. A woman sitting next to him catches his attention as she reads a magazine while waiting for the bus. Undeterred, Forrest extends a friendly gesture by offering her some chocolates and striking up a conversation centered around shoes. Initially rebuffed, the woman gradually becomes drawn into Forrest's captivating story as he recounts his childhood experiences from 1956. We see flashbacks of young Forrest growing up in Greenbow, Alabama, where he was fitted with leg braces to straighten his curved spine. The doctor wonders at Forrest's strong legs, but comments on his spine being as bent as a politician's. Forrest struggles to walk through the doctor's office, and his mother's concerned expression speaks volumes. As they walk down the street, a tragic misstep occurs when Forrest's leg brace becomes lodged in a sidewalk drain. His mother rushes to his aid, scolding any onlookers who dare to gawk at her son's disability. She is a fiercely protective mother who teaches Forrest to never let anyone make him feel less than he. The two live in a sprawling mansion with empty rooms aplenty, which they have converted into a boarding house for travelers and tenants. Despite Forrest's low IQ, his mother continually reminds him that he is just as capable as anyone else. With a steadfast determination to provide her son with the best education, Ms. Gump enrolls Forrest in the top-ranked public school in Greenbow. However, upon reviewing Forrest's IQ, the school's principal, Mr. Hancock, denies his admission and instead recommends a specialized school. Undeterred, Ms. Gump fights for her son's enrollment and is ultimately forced to make a compromising agreement with the principal. With their boarding house always filled to capacity, Forrest is surrounded by a diverse group of tenants, including a young Elvis Presley. Forrest delights in listening to Elvis's musical talents and watching his unique dance style, providing endless entertainment. On his first day of school, Forrest finds himself sitting alone on the bus, as no other children are willing to sit beside him. It's then that Forrest's life changes forever, as a charming and beautiful young girl named Jenny offers him a seat beside her. Overwhelmed by her stunning appearance, Forrest gratefully accepts and the two soon become fast friends. During the ride to school, Jenny inquires about Forrest's legs and he shyly informs her that they're just like everyone else. From that day on, Forrest and Jenny sit together each day, sharing stories and experiences. Jenny introduces Forrest to tree climbing and helps him improve his reading skills, while Forrest teaches her how to swing from branches. They spend countless hours together, with Jenny never eager to go home. Despite his limited intellect and physical challenges, Forrest remains a kind and gentle soul, often targeted by bullies who fail to see his true worth. One fateful day, as Forrest runs from his tormentors, his leg braces snap, revealing his incredible speed and agility. From that moment on, Forrest travels everywhere through the power of his legs. Concerned when Jenny fails to show up at school, Forrest embarks on a journey to her remote home in the woods. Upon arriving, he discovers that Jenny has fled from an abusive father and is now being safeguarded by her grandmother. Overjoyed, Forrest realizes that Jenny now lives close to his own home. Some nights, Jenny takes refuge at Forrest's house, seeking solace from her fears. As time goes by, the two childhood friends mature and remain inseparable, their bond strengthened by the trials they've faced together. With his exceptional running ability, Forrest secures a football scholarship at the University of Alabama in 1963, where he trains under legendary coach Bear Bryant. During his time at college, he witnesses the historical stand of Governor George Wallace at the schoolhouse door and finds himself on TV. As he recounts his story to a stranger, another person overhears. After graduation, Forrest sets out to visit Jenny at her hostel, only to find her in a car with another man. Believing the man is causing Jenny harm, Forrest charges at the car, delivering a series of blows. Despite these setbacks, Forrest excels as a kick returner, earning All-American honors. He even has the opportunity to meet President John F. Kennedy at the White House, where he savors a lavish feast. Five years after his college graduation, Forrest's mother is elated with pride as he becomes a successful football star. Following his graduation, Forrest decides to join the U.S. military. Despite his high achievement in football, he still encounters hostility from his fellow soldiers on the bus, just like he had in school. Fortunately, he meets a comrade named Benjamin Buford Blue, also known as Bubba. Bubba is kind enough to offer Forrest a seat next to him and inquires if Forrest has ever been on a shrimp boat. Bubba hails from a shrimp fishing family and is immensely passionate about the industry. He encourages Forrest to join him in starting a shrimp business after their military service. Forrest excels in basic training and is highly regarded by his sergeant. With a heart full of hope and determination, Forrest sets off on a journey to Memphis, Tennessee, among seeing an advertisement of Jenny performing at a singing show. 
Upon arriving, he discovers that Jenny is being mistreated by someone at the show and he immediately comes to her rescue. Despite his affections, Jenny rejects Forrest's love and asks him to leave her alone. Forrest, who is about to depart for Vietnam, assures Jenny that he will write to her regularly. In the war-torn Vietnam, Forrest serves with distinction under Lt. Dan Taylor in the Mekong Delta region with the 9th Infantry Division. Under the guidance of the experienced Lt. Dan, Forrest and Bubba gain invaluable knowledge and experience. Despite facing rigorous missions and harsh weather conditions, Forrest remains steadfast in his duty and continues to serve with bravery and honor. During his time serving in Vietnam, Forrest writes numerous letters to Jenny about his experiences in the war. Despite being thousands of miles away from the love of his life, Forrest's affection for her remains strong and unyielding. However, tragedy strikes during a mission as Forrest's platoon is viciously ambushed. Many soldiers, including Lieutenant Dan, are left badly wounded. But, thanks to his superior running ability, Forrest is able to escape the attack unscathed. However, when he goes back to search for his friend Bubba, he finds him mortally wounded. In his final moments, Bubba expresses his wish to return home to his family. Forrest is left to grapple with the harsh reality of war and the sacrifice of his fellow soldiers. While recovering in the hospital, Forrest discovers a newfound passion for Ping Pong. He becomes so skilled that he even plays in his dreams. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Dan loses both of his legs and blames Forrest for not allowing him to die during the mission. He believes that if he had perished, he would not be living as a disabled man. Despite his anger, Dan is awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery. Upon returning home, Forrest receives the Congressional Medal of Honor from President Lyndon B. Johnson. During a stroll through the city, Forrest unexpectedly comes across an anti-war protest at the Pentagon rally, where he briefly reconnects with Jenny. On the happiest day of his life, Forrest learns that Jenny has become a passionate anti-war activist and fallen into a dangerous lifestyle of drug addiction. But as always, he comes to her rescue, this time by fiercely defending her against her abusive partner. As they stroll through the streets, Jenny opens up to Forrest and shares her struggle. The following morning, she sets off for San Francisco, leaving behind Forrest and his Medal of Honor. Through his incredible talent for ping pong, Forrest becomes a sports sensation and eventually joins the All-American Ping Pong team, where he competes against the Chinese and helps bridge the gap in ping pong diplomacy. This leads to a historic interview on The Dick Cavett Show alongside John Lennon. After his time in New York City, Forrest reunites with Lieutenant Dan who has become disgruntled by his loss of mobility and often turns to alcohol to cope. Despite Dan's initial disdain for Forrest's simple-minded nature and his own perception as a war hero, the two quickly become the best of friends. During their time together, they fiercely defend each other against anyone who would dare to insult them, with Dan refusing to tolerate anyone calling Forrest an imbecile and Forrest reciprocating by refusing to let anyone refer to Dan as disabled. Later, Forrest's exceptional ping-pong skills earn him an invitation to the White House to meet President Richard Nixon. In a turn of events, Forrest ends up in a room at the Watergate complex where he unintentionally uncovers the Watergate scandal. Eventually, Forrest's service in the army comes to an end and he is honorably discharged. With his newfound wealth from the ping-pong paddles business, Forrest sets out to fulfill a promise to his fallen comrade Bubba by buying a shrimping boat named after the love of his life, Jenny. Despite missing her deeply, Jenny is struggling with addiction and reaching a breaking point. Forrest finds solace in his faith and regularly attends church to pray for success in his shrimping venture. Lieutenant Dan, still grappling with his own demons, joins Forrest on the Jenny, but their shrimping endeavors prove to be less than fruitful. Yet, in the face of danger and uncertainty, Forrest's boat proves to be the only one to weather the storm of Hurricane Carmen. As the only boat to have withstood the powerful Hurricane Carmen, Forrest and Dan are reaping bountiful harvests of shrimp. This leads to the establishment of the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, which expands with the purchase of 12 additional boats. On the ship, Lieutenant Dan finally expresses his gratitude to Forrest for saving his life during their mission. He has come to appreciate the value of his life and is filled with happiness. However, Forrest's joy is cut short when he receives news of his mother's illness and hurries home to take care of her. Sadly, she succumbs to cancer and Forrest is left to mourn her passing. As he recounts his story to a stranger sitting next to him on a bench, she is moved by his tale and misses her bus to stay and listen. Eventually, Forrest finds work as a gardener through the Fathers of Alabama and departs from working with Lieutenant Dan. As the shrimping business continued to flourish, Lieutenant Dan wisely invested Forrest's shares into a successful fruit company, turning both of them into millionaires. Forrest, being the generous soul he is, divided a portion of the profits to honor Bubba's legacy and to give back to his community. He donated half of the earnings to Bubba's family and a significant sum to the Foursquare Gospel Church, 
and the local fishing hospital. After years of distance, Jenny finally returned to Forrest in 1976. As they caught up on old times, Forrest regaled her with tales of his adventures in ping-pong and shrimping. Over time, their bond was rekindled and Forrest showed his love by picking her fresh flowers every day. Touched by his kindness, Jenny gifted him the most comfortable shoes she could find. Ultimately, Forrest asked Jenny to be his wife, expressing his deep love for her. With a heavy heart, Janet initially declines Forrest's proposal but eventually confesses her love for him and they share a passionate night together. However, the next morning Forrest wakes up to find that Jenny has disappeared. Devastated, he sets off on a journey of self-discovery, embarking on a cross-country run with no specific destination in mind. His journey captures the attention of the nation and soon, people from all over the country join him in his marathon. Forrest's inspiration and wisdom become a source of guidance for many, and after three years of running, he returns to his hometown of Greenbow. Out of nowhere, Forrest receives a letter from Jenny inviting him to visit her in Savannah and see what life has in store for them. Forrest then shares with the woman on the bench why he's been waiting at the bus stop. He reveals that he's on his way to see Jenny. The woman realizes that the address he's heading to is just a few blocks away, and suggests he run instead of taking the bus. Overjoyed at the prospect of finally seeing Jenny, Forrest sprints to her. When he arrives, he's over the moon to learn that she has a three-year-old son, Forrest J.R., whom he learns is his own child. Tragically, Jenny informs Forrest that she is suffering from a mysterious illness and asks him to marry her. Without hesitation, Forrest agrees and the two move back to Greenbow. They live a blissful life there and eventually exchange vows at their wedding ceremony. To everyone's surprise, Lieutenant Dan shows up, now equipped with a brand new set of titanium alloy legs. Forrest, Jenny, and their son, Forrest Gump Jr., lead a life filled with happiness and love. However, their joy is cut short as Jenny succumbs to a severe illness. Despite his heartache, Forrest remains devoted to her until her final moments, providing her with care and comfort. He later buries her under their cherished childhood tree and visits her gravesite daily, sharing stories of his day. Forrest also instills important life lessons, such as ping-pong and fishing, in his son. The movie concludes with Forrest sending his son off on his first day of school. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Cinematic Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the story of this film and our analysis of its themes and characters. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful movie reviews and analysis.